I can't think of a better way to close our show. Uh, Charlie mentioned to me on the phone, he said, I know Ben Koberg, and it's just so great that I wanted to have him on the show as well. So Ben's going to close out the show. Let's be a good audience for him. Let's welcome Ben Koberg. Who thinks Tom's a real schlooser? <laughs> I, uh, I've had that in my pocket all day. Uh, no, thank you, Tom. Um, uh, so, yeah, so this, I wasn't, initially I was going to do a story about, um, it wasn't going to be a true story. But it had true elements to it. Um, sometimes I feel that fiction can can handle can uh, bear more truthful weight than the truth. You know, the truth has to be dolled up with um, you know flower and language at times, placating, patronizing things, etc. Fiction can sometimes be very honest. Like that's why I think he's found it down as one of the coolest shows because of the sort of sort of like lack this transparency that is like just suddenly being honest in that position of some like real character. Um, you know, so I was gonna do a story about a fictional dog that I never had. And the subsequent molestation that happened from that story, but I'm gonna I'm gonna save you guys from my fictional molestation story and and provide you the um, the the truthful, honest indoctrination story of New York City, which is kind of where we are. Um, Brooklyn Brewery is a borough of New York Brewery. <laughs> it's a brew borough. <laughs> it's a, a borough. What's your favorite borough? Uh, it's like I'm not the best storyteller either because I'm uh, I smoke weed and um, that's not why. But I'm a comedian and I tend to just tell jokes on liners. And those are a little bit different. You know, like poetry is not narrative, um, noises are not songs. <laughs> you know, if you make like noises in a row, is a song. I tell enough things, even, even not separately, would they string together some sort of theme that you could extract. Um, before I moved here, I, uh, I visited New York three times. So it was after the third time that I decided to to uh, come here. I'm from Denver, Colorado. Uh, lived there for 30 years of my life. Moved to Los Angeles, lived there for two years of my life. And then um, discovered well, I, I had known about New York, but then decided on New York. Um, I let me lock my, uh, let me lock it to portrait this fucking, fucking, that, uh, you know, like when you just keep doing that. You know, when you're looking at porn and just keep doing that. Because your dick works weird. And you just keep doing that. Just me. Um, so, I visited New York three times. First two times, I only uh, I had a Manhattan experience. Um, the story is about the uh, first time that I came to New York. The other times I think are semi-relevant because they're a part of the uh, the thing that sold me to the whole deal. Um, 
the third time I came here, the last time I sort of made me decide like I gotta live here. I uh, my first night here visiting my friend who I was staying with was even in town. He just left me his key and his place, his weed and everything. And that night I ended up getting a blow job in the back of a cab. It was after that time that I decided to live here. <laughs> but that's not what the story is about. The second time I came to New York, uh, I was on this TV show called What Not to Wear. <laughs> it's a TV show on TLC. Uh, the, the TV channel, it's kind of like, it's basically people who. You know, like that, that ch channel makes people good. Um, but that, that show was interesting. It was like my, my twin, my girlfriend who's a twin, her twin sister nominated us for the worst dressed couple in America. <laughs> and then they came to Denver and were like, hey, you're one of three, three of the worst dressed couples in America. Do you want to come to New York and have us exploit you? And I was like, sure. Um, so we stayed at the Green Hotel right by the Lake Show with Dave Letterman. And um, uh, they had two, two shower heads in the, uh, in the bathroom, which was pretty cool. Because um, we definitely didn't want to share warm water at that point in our relationship. So we each had our shower head. And, uh, but that's not what I'm going to talk about. Um, I, uh, I'm going to talk about the first time that I came to New York City, and I wasn't even originally wanting to come to New York City. I, uh, my brother was living in London with his wife um, at the time. Well, they're, they're still there, but they are living in London. She was teaching there. He was, he was working there, blah, blah, blah. I was going to go visit that. But I wanted to kind of create a foreplay for the traveling. So I decided to take a train to New York City where my buddy Johnny was living at the time. And so it took me a couple of days to get to New York on the train. And Johnny, um, I'd known for, for a little bit, uh, but we had become good friends. and. He was out here going to go to film school and living with some friends. And he said, yeah, come and stay. I got this situation, and the situation accommodates your scenario. <laughs> and my scenario was I had a girlfriend. I hadn't done comedy yet. I had laughed. I had seen comedies, but I had I had had that realization of me plus comedy equals yes, you know. Um, my girlfriend wanted to go with me to Europe initially, but I wanted to have sort of a unique, solitary experience that wasn't tainted by the politics of uh, you know cockwalking. <laughs> and, uh, so I was like, no, I'm just going to go on my own. And, and, and so I did it, took the train. Um, when I got to New York, my buddy Johnny picked me up at I think Penn Station is where the train comes into, um, from the, the Amtrak. And we immediately went back to the place that he was staying, which uh, was in the Upper West Side. And um, he was staying with some friends. His buddy and his, his buddy's cousin, and I only knew I only knew my friend, and but he was sort of he sort of edited me into this this scenario. Um, as soon as I got there, we had ordered we we got weed delivered. Um, this is 2002. You know, 9/11 had not happened. And, we, we all remember that, right? Uh, you guys remember 9-11, right? 
you better say yes. <laughs> a lot of people in the service industry think it's actually 9-12 because they were sleeping on 9-11. And uh, their uh, Monday is really their Tuesday. Um, but, I mean, come on, there's a gift shop already. I can't do a couple jokes. <laughs> Terrorism has already turned into tourism. <laughs> Not because of what I said, but because of what, whatever the opportunity is. So this is post 9 11, so it's sort of like, you know, that's why I took a train in New York. Um, and get there, we order weed, we order like $20 worth of track, $50 worth of quality weed, sour diesel, store around to this day. Um, we get real high, we decide to go to the, um, we, get, we decide to go to Central Park, which we're staying right by Central Park, and uh, we decide to play some Frisbee, we're both good at Frisbee, so we decided to create a good amount of distance between us. Um, but as is the case, we usually, when you play frisbee, sometimes you miss it. <laughs> and like I said, I missed it. I happened to miss Johnny's throw, which I'm not going to say is wild. By the way, Johnny, Johnny's email is johnnyhongkong at hotmail.com. <laughs> He's added Hong Kong to his name. So this is the person that, that is welcoming me in this world. And and so he throws it a couple times, I miss it a couple times, both those two times it goes into a, a family sitting and having a picnic in Central Park. You know, granted they are on the border of Frisbee land. They know this. They know this. And the Frisbee goes into their group. They toss it back to me because they're closest to me. Toss it again. Same thing happens, except this time it hits the, the baby that's in the group's head. And, and the father of the baby, who obviously wasn't a good enough father to catch the frisbee before it hits his head. Because I was like, heads up, heads up, heads up. Like you do when you play frisbee and you can't catch it, but it's going to hit somebody. You say heads up. And the dad just goes, come on guys, how many times? How many times? And then I, I answered him, I said, well, like, two times? <laughs> I think that's how many times it happened. And I didn't know if he, if he had Asperger's and was just giving me an honest to goodness quiz about how many times or if he was trying to make a sarcastic point. Um, so we overstayed our welcome there in Central Park, decided to move back. Um, well, we actually took a train from the north side to the lower east side, but on the way from the park to the subway, Johnny had informed me that we could, um, we could drink in a brown bag at that point. Like, you could drink on the streets in a brown bag. And so we went to the liquor store, the, the bodega, Got a couple of 40s, they popped their caps with, they had like a, a bottle opener there. <laughs> this is a thing. And, and then before you knew it, we were on the subway drinking our 40s and get out, go to the transition for the, for the next train, and um, we get stopped by a couple of Italian guys. They're MTA cops, but. Initially, they just look like Italians. Um, I just thought they were Italian and like vigilantes. Um, and then they gave us tickets for open containers because MTA law at that time was different than the New York law. So we had to basically got $50. Well, I didn't get the $50 ticket, but the $50 ticket went to my mom's house and she paid it. But that, that's beside the point. <laughs> that's just, that's beside the point. Uh, then we got back eventually up to uh, to that west side, and um, by the way, there was like a pool table in the middle of this place, and Johnny's friend who 
you're staying with, you're staying in a room that maybe had like a bunk bed, a computer, and then the guy that let go of the place, he, you know, I, we, we hung out in that, but I, I never saw his room. Um, it was also the first time that I heard peaches. You know, the fuck the pain away. Fuck the pain away. Fuck the pain away. Fuck the pain away. I think that's that song. Fuck the pain away. Why are you singing along? Fuck the pain away. <laughs> Have you guys ever fucked the pain away? Am I the only one that's fucked the pain away? Am I the only one that's had a headache and decided to fuck to eradicate the headache? Seriously? Well, anyways, it was a good sexy song to, uh, to listen to an encounter. And um, my buddy had to work at a cabaret that night. And this is before I did comedy. And he, there was a comedy show happening at the, um, at the place that he was working. He was bartending. And so I just went and hung out with him the whole night. Uh, saw a bunch of comedians. Saw like the vaudevillian dude. Older guys saw some younger dudes, and there was a uh, musical act on the keyboard that um, she was dressed as Wonder Woman. And uh, after the show, Wonder Woman was uh, lingering about the bar and uh, said to have some drinks. We kept drinking, kept drinking. She wanted to still hang out, so she she asked me and my buddy Johnny if we wanted to hang out. And um, we went back to this place, this fancy place that was maybe on the hundredth floor or something. Um, and we were drinking and smoking weed, both the twenty dollar version and the fifty dollar version. Um, I think she even had some coke. But she brought out dick because that's what, how Wonder Woman becomes Wonder Woman. <laughs> so it's just a little, little bump. And we were watching that channel. Have you guys seen that channel? I don't even know if it's still on, but it's the porno channel that was like, it was like public access. But it was, you could see pornos on it. What was that called? Okay, so there you go. <laughs> so it's a real thing. It's corrupt. Uh, next thing you know would be Wonder Woman asks us kind of like into the air, both of us, do you guys want to make out? Uh, if you remember from earlier in the story, I have a girlfriend. Um, so initially I was apprehensive, I opened up my wallet, I just got the, the actual uh, kind of the developed photographs that my girlfriend, because she was a photographer, had given me was of her taking a selfie with a medium format camera, like a real selfie, you know? I'm going to fold up photo paper, you know? A real selfie, like something physical I could hold. It wasn't just an Instagram account I could escape out of. This photo wasn't going anywhere. So when she asked if I want to make out, I was like, I want to make out. You know, my reptile brain wants to make out with its bifurcated tongue and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> but my social political brain in this situation is presented with somewhat of a dilemma because I want to have a unique New York experience. This is why I didn't bring my girlfriend so I could have this experience. But it was also like, well, you know, where could this be going? My friend Johnny and Wonder Woman start making out. <laughs> I'm on the other side, she reaches her hand over on my leg. Um, I don't push her hand off because I'm not rude. <laughs> That's not me. And she, you know, starts grabbing and rubbing, and I, I can't say that I didn't get hard. You know, I'm not gonna say I wasn't hard. <laughs> um, 
I was hard for her enough for her to notice. You know, but I wasn't forcing the issue. I wasn't trying to prove any points about my intensity. I was just being. You know, we've all had a kid on our planet and got a bottle, right guys? Right guys? So I decided, I, I, I looked at the picture one last time, and I'm like, okay, look, she's a photographer, she wants to work for National Geographic, she'll understand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, this is the equation that I'm doing in my brain. Like, I'm trying to justify it, right? I mean, come on. And so I ended up kissing her. And we ended up making out, kind of going back and forth, and her lipstick is getting faded and smudged as, you know, Wonder Woman's lipstick is want to do, and she's entangled between two, uh, two twenty-something dudes. She was a little older than Wonder Woman. Uh, she's definitely a woman. Uh, but probably just in her thirties, like hindsight, I, this is 2002, so I was, I was pretty, fairly young and green. I had had anal sex, but I hadn't. Um, I haven't gotten asked to knock yet if that tells you the age range that I was in, you know? Because it has to knock is at least a two, two to three year graduation from just a year. Anybody want to prove me wrong? <laughs> so I'm making out, and at one point she's, her, her, her bottom is pressed up against my pelvis, and I'm, um, Busty grinding, and she's kissing my friend Johnny. And and then she turns back around her shoulder, and she she just says, "Let's get crazy." Now, what, what comes to your mind when you hear <laughs> hear the statement, "Let's get crazy"? But we were already like kissing, making out, there's three of us, and I figured it was just sort of like, okay, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna jump in the balls, you know? <laughs> but at that point, I got really, I got really scared, my bone <laughs> left my body. My, my socially conscious bone left my body. And I, I backed off, and I said, I can't, I can't do this, you know? I was, the kissing is enough, but I can't. I can't do this, but you guys go ahead. But of course, you know, you if you break the you break the drum circle, you break the drum circle, you know. If one guy stops drumming, everybody stops drumming. <laughs> and so I, I went to the, the top bunk, because again there was, it was a bunk bed, it was like a couch in a bunk bed or something. It was a nice, it was a lost bunk, it was really nice. Um, and she kept trying to kind of like siren, siren me down to participate, but I, I held off, you know? I was 2002, got to 2000, uh, got to 2014, the girl that I was thinking about and worrying over is now married to somebody else and has a kid. And then you're thinking, like, if I could go back in a DeLorean to do it all over again, you know, would I, would I travel back in time and get HPV <laughs> from uh, another woman? Maybe. You know? And if I did travel back in time to get HPV from Wonder Woman, would I then now purposefully give all the women that I'm with HPV and tell them that Wonder Woman sent me? <laughs> Absolutely. Because <laughs> who doesn't want to get Wonder Woman's HPV? You know? That's all to say that, uh, I don't know if there's no moral of the story other than just your own. Um, New York is this magical place and, uh, 
the uh, you know now it's uh, two for I don't even know the math, but anyways, um, uh, the place that I was staying at uh, was was Turning Duff's place. My buddy Johnny Hong Kong is good friends with him and his cousin throughout, you know, their early lives. And that was 2002, that was 2014. And we're, uh, we're opening up our diaries for people to, to listen to. <laughs> Are we really a diary aid? You know, like, is it confessional? Is that what this is? You snooze, you should lose. <laughs> uh, I don't know. New York is just the best place that I've ever been. It's given me all these opportunities and met, like interviews with all these cool people. But, you know, even when they don't turn the TV off during uh, as long as it's hard. As long as it's not fucking like sports, you know. Imagine that a famous story was like a thing. <laughs> so you could be like, yeah, that was cool. Now it's just sort of like everybody's thinking about themselves and <laughs> introspective. Should I do coke later? Should I, <laughs> should I get some weed? Have you watched an episode of Wonder Woman? <laughs> Let me do all three. Let me carry on with the one that doesn't ruin your life for the most. Email us and then uh, we'll have you back. Thanks for coming. We'll see you again. Bye bye.